As this is my first TEDx talk, I decided to go online and get a bit of advice. And it said, start off with a punchy title. So I went for it. Antiques will save the world and they'll look good doing it. It's punchy, short, catchy, but what's more, I believe it. It seems like a tall order, especially for something that sits in Auntie's front room, that inlaid cabinet full of trinkets you weren't allowed to touch as a kid. How is that going to save the world? Well, I'm here to tell you that antiques are going to save the world, and they're going to look good doing it, and much more besides. First of all, I have a confession to make. I am an antiques dealer, and I've had On the Square Emporium for 10 years, so ulterior motives aside, I do passionately believe that antiques are the way forward, and we need to get away from modern furniture. We live in a time where everything is disposable. Products are built with a finite timeline. A finite timeline is forever getting shorter. The shorter the lifespan of a product, the faster the consumer purchases again. It's simple economics. Now Edison didn't invent the light bulb, but what he did do was he made it better. And he also made it uh, easier to produce and cheaper. But what Edison and his cronies also did was they created a finite timeline. They got together and they decided on 1,200 hours was a reasonable length of time for a light bulb. It was long enough that people didn't complain, but it was short enough that we had to keep on going back and buying more. Now, even in the 1880s, there was light bulbs that could last a lot longer. But to the manufacturers, they didn't make economic sense. And thus, our product finite lifetime disposable society was born. The more we threw away, the more we had to buy. Now, furniture is sometimes the last thing that we think about as part of the throwaway uh, culture that we have, but increasingly, it is. It's cheaper to buy a new sofa than it is to recover an old one. Chipboard chest of drawers and coffee tables with a lovely veneer bought from a high-end store is still just chipboard. A few years of knocks and bangs and the joins and seams will start to go. And it's off to the landfill. This is now what many people are coining fast furniture. So I'm, whenever I refer to fast furniture, which I will do throughout, what I mean is the majority of high street furniture. Most of it, from flat pack to high-end designer stuff, is made cheaply, whether or not it's sold cheaply or not. I love antiques, but even I can get led astray with a shiny new flat pack. And in my son Harvey's room, I bought a lovely colourful chest of drawers. This is not actually Harvey, this is a stand-in, I just like the picture. <laughs> but when you come to uh, put it together, you get this little annoying nut and bolt thing that holds the front of the door on. So I assembled the drawers, and it took about a year before the front of the drawer fell off. And I screwed it back on again, I'm sure you've fumbled with one of these yourselves. But now it seems to be every couple of weeks, I'm having to tighten up that nut to hold on the door. Now, after four years, the whole thing is starting to get a bit wobbly. It's probably been jumped on by the children. The back right corner is starting to go. And, after I mentioned, uh, front of the drawer is continuously falling off. It's coming to the end of its life. It's a chipboard. It's going to go to the dump and the landfill. Now, in my wife's bedroom, Sounds a bit strange. I do sleep in there too, and all my stuff is in there. But somewhere along the line of the evolution of our family, it became Mummy's bedroom. So, in Mummy's bedroom, we have a Georgian chest of drawers. This again is a stand-in, because this is what Mummy's bedroom would look like if my stuff wasn't in there. <laughs> but here we have a stand-in for the Georgian chest of drawers. It's 175 years old, the chest of drawers that we have. Now, Jill, my lovely wife, decided that she would like to change it. But the chest of drawers isn't destined for the landfill. After 175 years, it's going to On the Square Emporium for a lovely oil and wax care package, and then we put it back out for sale. Antiques just live on. Antiques are sustainable furniture. They can be used for generation after generation. They may have held clothes or been sat upon for 100 to 200 years, but with a bit of TLC every decade, they will last another 100 to 200 years. And they look good doing it. Today's fast furniture, disposable interiors, are having a serious detrimental effect on the environment. Let's have a look and compare in these unbiased graphics I have here. <laughs> we have fast furniture on the left. So, 
fast furniture, look at that first. The fast furniture is cheap because it's mass produced. It's made of low quality materials. Chipboard and MDF use poor quality wood that's just squeezed and glued together, often using formaldehyde or paraffin wax. But it's not just flatback. Fast furniture extends into the high-end interior shops. We often describe an item as mahogany, but it's just really chipboard with a veneer. It's the same cheap materials, just with a fancier cover. Production. The production of wood and wood pulp uses intensive farming. The production of modern fast furniture uses mass amounts of energy and caustic chemicals and petroleum materials. Transportation. The carbon footprint of modern uh, furniture is excessive. Wood is shipped halfway around the world to a manufacturer who makes the plywood and the chipboard and the MDF. Then that's shipped back halfway around the world to the producers who make the furniture. That's shipped to the distribution center. And that's shipped all the way over to the retailer and then shipped on to the end user. That's a lot of shipping. <laughs> Lifespan. The modern mass produced furniture is not made to last. The average year is somewhere between three to 10 years. That's a lot of replacement furniture that we'll be buying in a lifetime or a family will be buying in a lifetime. Craftsmanship. Even high-end mass-produced furniture has no craftsmanship. It may be some good design, but anything uh, with precision is machine precision. Flat pack's even worse. It leaves it up to us. And there's next to no uh, craftsmanship there. I'm sure like 99% of the population, I end up with little bits and pieces left over and something not quite right. It's just, there's no craftsmanship. Fast furniture and recyclable. Modern fast furniture is not recyclable. According to the US Environmental Protection Agency, only 3% of flat pack is actually recycled. That's led to a 600% increase in furniture waste between 1960 and today, and a 30% increase in landfill, furniture landfill in the last 10 years. This is even more worrying whenever we look at what the trend is, is, look, is potentially going to be. The assembly market at the minute is 13.1 billion globally, and that's expected to reach 18.2 billion by 2027. That's a 40% increase in just the next few years. So how green are antiques? Very green. Materials, well these were harvested decades ago, or centuries ago. They're not leading to deforestation of ancient trees, and they're not leading to deforestation to grow fast pulp growing trees. Production, they were mostly made by hand and not in automised energy guzzling factories. Transportation, they have no carbon footprint in the transportation of raw materials and negligible uh, carbon footprint in the transportation of the finished product. Most of the time you just put it in the boot of your car and you bring it home. Lifespan, as I've already pointed out, antiques were made to last. With a bit of care, they last for generations. Craftsmanship. Antiques is all about craftsmanship. Antiques were made by craftsmen who honed their skill over decades and generations. Recycling. Well, antiques are the epitome of recycling. We either pass it down to the generations or we resell it, it goes on to someone else. An antique has to be 100 years old to be an antique. It's already been recycled many times over. But should an antique become unusable, it is often worth more in its parts. The wood and often the handles and the knobs and the fittings can be reused to restore something else or they can be used to mix a bit of upcycled furniture. An idea of how collective buying antiques can make a difference. Auction Technology Group, who run a surf software system uh, for 3,800 auction houses, they did a carbon impact report last year where they calculated that through the auction sales in one year, one million tonnes of greenhouse gases were saved by people buying at auction as opposed to buying new. That's equivalent to 50 million trees growing for one year. Antiques are saving the world. Purchasing antique furniture is guilt-free. It's also eco-friendly. It has no carbon footprint or next to no carbon footprint. It's saving the planet and it looks good. Also, as a kicker, it might even make you money. Or at least you'd be better off than if you bought fast furniture. Antiques are on the rise. In the last five years, antique prices have risen, especially in popular items like side tables, bedside tables, and anything with little drawers. Little drawers are in for some reason, heavily in. But on the whole, 
Antiques are still half the price of what they were in the mid-1980s. That was the end of the last heyday of antiques. So in theory, that means you can buy an antique today, use it for 10 years, and double your money. In reality, I'd say you'll at least get your money back or close to it, which is not bad after 10 years of use, and you're not going to get that with high-end furniture. It's modern fast furniture. So antique furniture will help save the planet. It might make you money, you can pass it on to your children, it will live on, and it looks good. I like to stress the looking good. <laughs> they do look great, and there's something for everyone. Antiques can suit a lovely Georgian mansion. It can also suit a modern apartment, or a, uh, or a small terrace house. There is something for everyone. And like myself, antiques get better with age. The odd bump, bash and wrinkle just adds to character. Even though as a kid you weren't allowed to touch Aunt Mildred's antiques, they do stand up to grubby kids' fingers, the odd crayon or a wayward sticker. Patina, we often hear that word used in antiques. What is patina? It's just a build up of years of touching, dirt, cleaning and wax. The more patina, the more use, the more character. The same cannot be said for modern furniture. <coughs> High gloss finishes and veneers won't stand up to the test of time. They don't even stand up to grubby fingers and crayons, let alone bumps and bashes. Antiques are just a lot more forgiving. Antiques gives you a lot more range of choice. A lot of people don't think about it. Maybe it's just me. I regularly go around all the high street shops. I go to the furniture conventions. I see what's coming in the next season to keep on top of it. And everything just seems a bit samey. Once you delve into the world of antiques, you'll realize that there's a vast array of styles and woods and finishes available. We're talking 300 years of changing styles from all over the globe are available to you if you just shop around. And it's not all brown furniture. There's lovely, colourful, hand-painted Eastern Europe 19th century cabinets and chests, Louis XIV opulent gold furniture, there's Chinese silks and Persian rugs. These are all available at a quality you will not find in contemporary shops. But once you get the bug, you'll also realise that brown is the new black, and there's nothing better than a lovely piece of Georgian antique Irish furniture. Antiques also connect us to the past. We have a lovely oak chair sitting beside the fire. If you were to sit on something like that, even if the story is lost to us, we can imagine the people that sat in that chair before us, what went through their mind and what happened in their lives. It's a connecting to the past. There's an existential depth more than just a piece of furniture. Antiques can sometimes just work better. An antique chest of drawer, if you wax the runners once a decade, the drawers just run smooth and true. You can't say the same from modern furniture, mechanisms will go. Oh, an antique chest of drawers are magical. They are. They're like a tortoise. If you have an antique chest of drawers and a modern chest of drawers of the same size, more pants and socks will fit in the antique one than the modern one. Nobody knows why. So am I saying we should just stop buying new furniture and only buy antiques? Yes. <laughs> well, it's a good start. And let's give that a go at onthesquareemporium.com. <laughs> Slides are mixed up. <laughs> but there may not be enough antiques to fill all of our furniture needs. So if you do need to buy new, look for something that will become an antique. Something that's the same ethos as an antique. Something that will spend, stand the test of time. Something that's made from solid wood. Something that's well crafted. Something with good joints and seams. And preferably get it from a local craftsman wherever possible. You don't have to use the same bit of furniture for decades. But as long as you buy furniture that stands a chance of, st of uh, being passed down and still used and cherished with other people and other generations, it will become an antique. So next time you're looking to buy a piece of furniture, Buy an antique, or something that will become an antique. Because antiques will save the world, and they'll look good doing it. Thank you. Well done, Justin.